Now that we have a better understanding of the bigger picture of the accounting process, let's go into some detail and have a look at the specific transactions affecting the journal entries. This we will do in order to gain a better understanding of how these transactions will then later on affect the posting to the ledger accounts. The journals are the first books of entry. This is where the source documents are posted and from which ledger entries are then extracted. We'll start off with the cash journals. Firstly, the cash receipts journal is depicted in the following table below. This shows us the generally accepted format for this journal. In the first example, we need to specify the document number. In this case, we are referring to a capital investment into the business. We will specify the day that the transaction occurred, the details of this transaction, then under analysis of receipts, the amount affecting the transaction. Then we will specify the ledger accounts that are later going to be affected in the following columns. First of all, the bank column, which shows us that money was coming into the business. This was not a transaction affecting income or expenses. Thus, it doesn't appear under the current income column. This was a capital investment. Capital investment will then be shown under the sundry accounts section. Here we have 130,000 Rand. In our second example, this was a cash receipt relating to a service fee or sales. Under the document number, we have the receipt number, in this case CRR1, the day of the transaction, the details, and then under analysis of, of receipts, the amount, in this case 1,000 Rand. This was 1,000 Rand coming into the bank account, and because this was a transaction affecting income and expenses, we will note it under the current income column for 1,000 Rand. At the end of the month, all the totals are then added together. And our current income and sundry accounts should then always equal the total that's in the bank account.